All right, let's do it. I'm gonna tuck my, uh, the wires into my little outfit here. There we go, huh? Okay, surf green, everybody. First I put on a base coat of white, as always. Just gonna do some normal things today. On this normal day. I did not wait in between coats. Putting the white base coat on and then this surf green lacquer. This body has already been undercoated and sanded and then given to me. So when I started painting it, it already had that on there. So the white I put on is white lacquer. Uh, yeah, and it didn't suck into the pores or anything of the wood because it was already sealed. It was already undercoated, just like everything I have. There we go. Surf green strat. I'm just giving it a good little look at here. Once over, no crumbs. Little dirt contaminations. Okay. There's that. I'll put it over here. I'll grab something else. Uh, what is this? Aged silver spark. Okay. And get some tape. Cover that information up. White the binding has been taped. Both bindings. There's tape on there. Seems like when I paint these, I get a few people that ask, "What are you painting right over the binding?" No, it's tears tape on there. After I do all of this, someone will take that tape off, clean that binding up, scrape it up nice and clean. And then on sparkle day, I will sparkle it. Right now, I'm just putting a base coat on there. You know how on sparkle bodies you have a similar metallic base coat, similar color. Okay, there you go. Now, because this is sparkle, it's not as critical if there are small imperfections, like little contaminations or say sanding scratches. Not that I think this body has those things, but I'm just saying. Um, yeah, because there's gonna be sparkle put on this body. Metal, metal flake sparkle. And it, it will hide all that kind of weird stuff if it's even there. So, paint job doesn't need to be cherry perfect. Most of it won't be seen. It's only on there. So that, ooh, look how heavy that is. See that? You see how that, when I put the air on there and runs? <laughs> That's what you guys are all talking about. Oh, it's gonna run, watch out. It's because the tape. Tape doesn't hold the lacquer the way the, the body, the wood does, because the wood already has lacquer on it that's been sanded. The tape is just tape. See that? But if I go put it on my rack right now, and that's going to drip all stupid. Who knows where it's going to go. So, I'll just keep blowing air on it till it skins over. Look at right there. Oh. Again, see, even if it does drip down a little bit right here, not the end of the world. The sparkle's gonna hide all of that, but still, not something you want to really uh, shoot for. Okay. I went a little hog, hog wild on this one. 
but all those imperfections that in the runs see how I, I skin them over with air then you just fog another coat on there in the darker areas where all that paint collected just go away all right there silver sparkle okay what else can I do this one is sapphire bright sapphire metallic phone is right in the view of my glasses so I'm looking out of the wrong part of my glasses and I can't see squat just what you want out of a painter okay put that in there cover that up that's what we do because let's say after I'm done if I didn't cover it up and I painted over that information and it got damaged somehow and they had to sand it down to redo it which happens from time to time well they're not going to sand down the paint that got into that cavity so you, um, it, the information gets covered and then you don't you got a, a new body well it's not new but we're being, re, we're being redone and you don't know what color to do it even though the, and down in there will be that color am I making sense? Sometimes there's a faded version. It's hard to tell if it was faded, if it was aged, it, what, what it was. So anyway, we just uh, cover it all. So you can always read it. Okay, remember that last one, that silver? I went a little crazy. I'm going to lighten up on this one. Even though there's no binding, this is not a sparkle. This is a sapphire blue metallic another more difficult one to do because first you put this silver on here like this you got to make it perfect and then you put on there the uh, transparent sapphire blue so what I'll do is just get it covered it might be blotchy or uneven looking but that doesn't matter at this point Let's get it covered and then after it dries good I'll inspect it and then I'll put the blue on there but see now look I know and you know that this is sapphire blue metallic But when I put it back on my rack, sapphire, blue, uh, metallic. And let's say a few hours go by, uh, and I forget, well, what was that one again? I just scribe it on there in the wet paint. How fun is that? Okay. This is a color, color over color. It is a aged sea foam green over three tone. Telly, double bound. Bindings taped up. It's already been undercoated and sanded. All smooth and cherry. So I'm going to three tone it. Now, because it's a color on color, which I know many people don't, they're not fans of, but you know what? Some people are, and they buy them, so we make them. Anyway, uh, yeah, sea foam green is going to go over all this. So if my burst isn't cherry perfect, kind of doesn't matter. It's going to be covered, right? Tape on the binding. 
I got to be careful because that paint it likes to run right off that binding. And this particular dark color, the dark Salem that we use for the bursts, very thin and transparent. So you got to put a lot of it on there to get coverage. When you put a lot of it on there, uh, it wants to run. Just making a video here, doing normal things. Got a little, a little wide right there. But remember, it doesn't really matter. Not too wide, but you know, maybe wider than I would want. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> Maybe I need more coffee. Is that what it is? My hand isn't quite calibrated yet. Aim on the edge. Aim on the edge. Aim right on that edge. When you're doing a burst, well, when I do a burst, I like to aim on that edge. And let the overspray do the work. But you see how it's uneven there? I don't know if you can tell, but... Don't do your burst first thing in the morning because your hand is uh, won't cooperate. This was a three ton, right? Okay, guess what happened? I finished that three tone. All I did is put the red on there. Talked to Dale for a minute. Now I'm doing this. And this is... Well, never mind what this is. Okay. Trying to adjust my glasses, but it's almost impossible. This is silver I'm putting on here, silver metallic. Flip it around and do this side. I got just the right angle where most of my paint is flying off the edge. And uh, just a little bit paint is hitting that corner. You know what I mean? You understand what I'm saying? See, look at the paint. It's not hit, landing on the face. Some of it is, but most of it's shooting off into the an oblivion. Shooting it off, just finding that place where the edge of my little pencil beam is hitting this, this that crest. And that helps me to keep the faces in the back, the face in the back, with minimal overspray. Okay, flip it around. Oh, look at that big chunk right there. I'm gonna have to fix that. So, what I'll do then is never mind doing the burst on this one. I'll just get the sides covered. Let this dry for a sec. And then I'll sand out and fix that, uh, that bad spot. Or 
was that bad part. Right there. It's not too bad. Alright, well let's set this aside for now. Okay, now, wasn't I doing a sapphire metallic or something? Oh yeah, where was that? I got two of them actually. It's a gnaw. Extremely difficult. Not necessarily difficult to spray. Just real easy for something to go wrong and then have to start over. That have inspected really good for any kind of imperfections. You gotta, sometimes you gotta change the angle and the light to see things. Okay, looks good. I'm still gonna fog another coat of metallic on there to sort of even it up. I'm not sure if the video shows it, but yeah, right here it's a little like darker or mottly on the sides than uh, not even looking. So, this is silver, but I don't want to use that gun for that. This is silver. Less air, what I want. I should go find that air gauge. I don't know where it is. I think it's in my toolbox. I keep saying that, but... Uh, okay. With this phone tape to my helmet here, it might be a little bit hard for me to find that thing. Okay, there. Now what I'm going to do is put sapphire blue on here. What is this? Tobacco? I don't want that. I want um, shellac, I don't want that, sapphire blue, this. Tobacco done dried up. Here's my toolbox I keep talking about. Something went flying, what was it? Oh, brush. Yeah. my sparkle gun right there okay now that we've got this stupid gauge I can hook it up but I don't have all let me see can I can you even read that how can I clean that off acetone oh don't you use gloves oh my god you're gonna melt all right fine I'll use gloves This is normal day stuff. Normal stuff I don't film. Stupid things in between painting that are dumb. Well, not dumb, just not uh, worthy of anything. See what I go through? I'm such an excellent human. <laughs> You know how glasses, well I have uh, glasses and they're progressive. So the bottom where you would be reading out of is good for up close vision. Bottom of the glasses, the lenses. And then the top part is for distance. Like say you're driving, yeah, you want to look down the road and see better. So when I've got my head tilted down right now to do with this, I'm looking out of the top part of my lenses, which is far and not close and I can't see what I'm doing. This whole thing is dumb. You can read that, right? What if I have a uh, steel wool? Where's my steel wool? There's a crusty old piece right there. Acetone. 
Where'd it go? Dun, 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 dun. There's my gauge that everybody's crying about, and let me hook it up now. Are you thoroughly amused? What was I doing? I was spraying silver. No. I was spraying sapphire but the gun I use for where is that gun for sapphire has a different kind of a fitting at the bottom well actually what it is is right here I could put my gauge on there but then I use this to dial to change the air pressure that comes out of the gun so the gauge wouldn't show the gauge only shows what I'm doing here not here so I'll use that gauge on this. Well, you know what? I'll just pre spray this silver on there. And I'm getting aggravated. Okay. Silver. Plug the dumb thing in. Turn a gauge so people can see. There. What does it say? That's how much air I use. But let's paint it and we'll make sure it works. La 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 la. Okay, I'm painting. Here we go. La la la. Painting. So how much air was that? There. Is that uh, the answer you need? I'm trying to make it focus. Is it focusing? Are you happy now, everybody? There. Okay, good. Sapphire metallic. No, this is trans transparent sapphire. Wow, am I in a bad mood or what? Okay, there goes my transparent sapphire blue. Now, on this one... Oh, I better turn it down to get that air pressure just right. Okay. I missed it on there real easy. I think I made a video of one of these before. I don't remember. There aren't that many different colors. There's only so many videos you can make, you know? far away. See how far away I am? How far away? Like this far, that's probably 18 inches away. I'm barely pulling that trigger. Just starting to get some blue mist on there. Trying to get it as even as I can get it. Just barely fogging a blue on there. Okay, I did one coat of that. Sides usually get covered a little faster with the pattern that I use, so they might be a little bluer at this point than the face and the back, but. Okay. I hear people talking behind me. I hope nobody wants anything. Okay, now I've got two real foggy piss coats on there. Now what I'll do is just examine it for anything that looks wrong. Squirt some paint here and there to kind of even it up if I see an area that's light. put it on just a little bit heavier not so much on the sides because the sides are already heavier so I'm gonna put a little on the side I'll put a little heavier on the back far away still far away and slow a little bit heavier than I was doing it far away and slow okay flip it are you drinking your coffee right now 
Okay, there we go. Far away and slow. Bob Ross used to say two hairs. What did he say? Two hairs and some air? <laughs> Something like that when he was putting snow on the mountains using that little pallet knife he had. Because people couldn't make the snow effect. And they would write him letters. How do I do it? This one takes longer to paint than other ones because you just got to ease it on there, that candy. In my experience anyway, if you put it on too fast, it wants to be uneven, look blotchy. And once you got the blotch, you can't get rid of it. <laughs> Maybe I should spray some penicillin on there and that would do something. Even. <coughs> well, because this one takes so long to paint, <coughs> me. I'm not going to get as many other ones done on this video. Different colors. That was what I was thinking. A blue one, a red one, a black one, whatever. But, you know, who wants to watch a four hour video of all this stuff. I know you say you do, but you really don't. You get bored quickly. Okay. Far away. I do it far away because that, um, I'm not good at explaining things. You know what tiger striping is, right? When you're making your pattern, when you're painting, you get too close, you know, and you're going back and forth, you get these stripes. But, if you get far away, like this, real far away, and you go back and forth, well, where's your stripe now? It's because the paint disperses like a shotgun blast. And you don't get those stripes, because it's, hmm, does that make sense? What do you call that? I need a PR guy. Okay. Sapphire blue metallic. Look at that. You know those blue florals? The tellies? It's the same deal. Except a burst. Okay, there's that. 